Welcome back one and all to the Green Hell Greenhorn. My name is Justin and today we'll be driving the Ford Escort Mark 1 in a race against a grid of 7 AI drivers, also in escorts, and we are away very slowly <laughs> in the Escort Mark 1, as I'm sure you guys noticed. Engines revving, we're all ready to race, and then Yeah, it has a very long first gear. As you can see, we just shifted into second gear at around 64 miles an hour. Typically in cars, that's when you're shifting into third gear, but of course, these old Ford Escort Mark 1s, these are five-speed transmissions in these, which is why we're just getting into fourth gear at 106 miles an hour, I think that was. Um, but yeah, these are very, very small cars. I believe they are rear-wheel drive, although I'm not entirely certain. They certainly they certainly feel rear-wheel drive, as you're about to find out here. Big snap of oversteer there. This is a very, very slow, slow car in comparison to the Ferrari concept car that we just drove last time out on the North Life. And, and, and I did, in fact, record this the same night that I recorded the Ferrari concept car. Uh, so I went from one of the fastest cars that I've ever driven around the Nordschleife to one of the slowest cars I've ever driven around the Nordschleife. So I'm having a bit of a hard time adjusting to this vehicle. I got up into seventh position briefly there when this guy had a mistake through turn two, I think it is. Um, had a, he had a little mistake and I was able to get by, uh, but then I had that twitch of oversteer. I had a second twitch of oversteer actually in that left-hander before coming down the hill uh, before that flat-out section and uh, that lost me the position to him, so I had two oversteer moments, one of which put him, put him side by side with me, almost or nearly, and then the other one uh, pretty much let him by. So at this point, I am actually just trying to keep up with these guys. The gearing in this car is definitely the part that's throwing me off the most. I understand the handling of the car. The braking zones are more or less going to be the same as, as usual, so, you know, I, I just break pretty much where I normally do for, for this type of vehicle. But uh, what's really throwing me off is the gearing, actually. And I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's because of the really long first gear or, or, or what it is. But it's just really weird gear. So you can see I'm in third there. I really need to be in second. And actually, I probably need to be going down in first. Little snap of oversteer there, uh, though, in the change of direction going from that left-hander to the right-hander. But it wasn't too bad. I was able to keep it all together and hang on to it. Uh, worth pointing out. Uh, as I'm sure you guys noticed, this video is short for a Green Hell Greenhorn video. It's on the shorter side comparatively to other episodes of this. And it is because I actually, uh, I, got, I did this race on my first try. No restarts, I swear to you. I mean, yeah, I could have edited it out, edited, edited out, <laughs> if I can English. Uh, I, you know, I may have done some editing. Uh, and you never would have known, but uh, I swear to you, this was the first race that I did with it, and uh, we got through it just fine. Now, obviously, I'm not doing too spectacular right here on this opening lap. It is a two-lap race. I believe it is 6 o'clock at night. We have clear skies at the Nordschleife here in Germany, and, of course, optimal grip on the, cir on the uh, circuit. Also, optimal temperatures as well, and also the... What was I going to say... No, nope. that's, that's really all I need to say. Oh, right, fuel consumption is off, as you can tell at the bottom left-hand corner, as is tire wear. Tire wear is turned off, as always. The AI is set to 95 out of 100, uh, which is it, which is what the AI was uh, at when I was doing the AI races before in, in older episodes of this. So I have not reduced the AI difficulty. It's exactly where it was before. I do believe there has been an update that improved the AI, though, within a set of courses since the last time I did a Green Hell Greenhorn video, if I'm not mistaken. Either that or it was the same update that brought us the Toyota GT86. That was episode 36 of the Green Hell Greenhorn. I think the updated AI was in there for that video, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that, though. Uh, so anyway, we are still in last position as it stands right now. However, we are just about hanging on to the back of the pack. Uh, everybody's spread out fairly evenly. It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of battling going on. We could really only see 5th, uh, 6th, and 7th. There we go. Uh, looks like there might be a little battle going on for 4th up ahead, actually. Yeah, it looks like a couple of cars went side by side. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to spot that on the YouTube version of this, depending on what quality you're on. But uh, way off in the distance there, I definitely saw some battling for 4th position going on, or I guess what would be 3rd position, because it was 4th that was attacking. Uh, here's another situation where I believe I wanted to be in third, or actually I really just wanted to carry a little bit more speed through that high-speed left-hander. Uh, I broke down to, or braked down to about 90 miles an hour, 
and really did not need to go that low for that corner. Not much grip in this car. Very surprising. It's quite a lightweight vehicle. Um, of course, it's uh, right-hand drive, which is a little strange for me. I'm used to driving left-hand drive vehicles, but, you know, I just I just adjust. Uh, definitely want to be taking the carousel in this car uh, with the soft suspension, but I'm actually running out a little bit wide, nearly on the lip of it there, and just kind of make it around, actually, and gained lots and lots of time. You can see we have closed right up on the back of this Zack Speed car. I believe it's a Zack Speed car uh, with this white and red and green livery up ahead of us. And there is some more battling going on. The, one of the blue, the blue Ford Escort has gone off the circuit. He's been overt overtaken by a white car. Now he's getting overtaken by the red car. He's going to try around the outside. The Zack Speed now getting involved. The blue car pulling away. The Zack Speed car, the white car on the inside now of this red car. And can we follow him through? Yes, we can. It looks like we're going to take seventh position. Very opportunistic move there as the red car was going side by side with the white car and hopefully we can start grabbing some positions off these guys as I acclimate myself with this very different car. Again, so different compared to the car that I just drove. Again, that Ferrari uh, Concept F1 car, just completely different, world's difference between the two of them. Uh, just as a, uh, as a reminder, or as a, just a, a, a point for you guys to, a point of reference for you guys, uh, the Ferrari prototype F1 car did a five minute 33. That was the lap for the prototype F1 car. Five minute 33, I'm in third gear, I need to be in second. There we go, I briefly dropped down to second there. Switch it back up into third. I believe I have a hair in my mouth and that's really starting to annoy me. A big snap of oversteer there, but it looks like we're gonna hang on to it and can that red car, yeah, the red car backs off there actually. Puff of smoke coming off of the white Zack Speed car up ahead of us, so I'm not sure how well he took that corner. I had to think about going into fourth gear before dropping down that jump, but decided better, better not to. So uh, stuck it, stayed in third gear around that very long right hander, running a little wide there, very wide really, uh, but no contact with the barrier or anything like that, flat out over that little jump. Uh, lifting off a little bit because I'm really not sure if this section is going to be flat out or not, and I'm just really kind of nervous about this car at high speed. I mean, it's pretty bad at low speed, so I would imagine at high speed it's even worse considering it doesn't have any aerodynamics. If anything, it's going to be less stable at high speed rather than more stable, I would imagine. Uh, but actually, that really didn't seem to be the case. Uh, strangely enough, for such a little car with such little power, uh, it had very little in the end of lo in the in the way of low end grip but it had quite a bit of high speed grip. Now, you know, it's it still understeers like crazy, but it's a lot less oversteery at high speed, which is which is kind of nice. It's very, very oversteery in low speed and low gears and everything. Uh, again, really not sure how to take this, but I believe I've gotten on the throttle right about the right time. I could have carried maybe a little bit more speed, but you can see we have lost some time to that white Zack Speed car up ahead. We're getting very close to the end of the lap, however, so. Uh, we will no longer be into new territory. I will have an opportunity to do the corners that I've already done, so that will give me an opportunity to really close up on these guys. Not much in the way of slipstream for this car, as far as I could tell. The red car behind me really not gaining on me. I'm quite a distance from the white car up ahead, so I'm not getting too much of a slipstream, but at the same time, I'm not really a threat from that red car behind, or not under any sort of threat. As we go through this high-speed left-hander, don't need to lift off there. You can always tell a car is either too fast or handles too poorly if you have to lift off for that left-hander. I think the Acura NSX or Honda NSX, one of those cars I had to lift off through there. Breaking a little on the early side. I definitely could have braked a little bit later there. You can see the red car gaining some time on us, but it looks like we're about the same distance from that white car. Very strange line through the final corner in second gear when I sh probably should be in first gear. Uh, I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference. Briefly up into third before dropping down into second once again and again I think maybe first gear would be the better choice for that corner but you might get better uh, better traction using second gear uh, which again in this car traction is at a premium so uh, it can really just take whatever you can get about 95 miles at the exit 95 miles an hour at the exit of that downhill right hander which isn't too bad down into second gear now as we enter this slightly tighter section a little bit slower section before we go through another flat-out section, then that high-speed right-hander, and then a very long flat-out section, actually. Nicely through there, no problems, using all of the curbing. Of course, uh, with how soft the suspension is on this car, you can really take quite a bit of curves. Uh, as far as whether or not I would recommend this car, oh, I never even mentioned, this car is not a mod. This car was part of Dream Pack 3, I think it is. Uh, the DLC for Assetto Corsa, so this is not a mod, this is an officially licensed vehicle, uh, this Ford Escort Mark, Mark 
one. Yeah, it was an escort mark one, I believe. Uh, taking lots of speed through there, a little snap of oversteer, and you can tell, again, I'm actually losing time to the car up ahead, so uh, the beginning of this second lap really has not been that kind to me. Uh, getting it into fifth gear now as we drop down the hill before once again climbing up another hill, and then we go into this high-speed left-hander. Very difficult corner. I really wasn't sure what to do here. You can see dropping it down to fourth gear, just under 110 miles an hour, and it seems that's about right. You can maybe carry 115 through there. I wouldn't try for too much more than that. Really hugging the inside line for that corner and getting a nice apex as we descend down the hill. Nice flat-out section through here until we get to the high-speed left-hander at the top of this next hill. Uh, using all of the curbing because, once again, very soft suspension in this Ford Escort. And then we go to the left-hand side. You can hear already lifting off the throttle then, dropping it down into fourth gear, uh, braking quite a bit as well into third gear for this right-hander. And then we'll be dropping it down into second gear for this left-hander and right-hander combination. And you can see we've actually closed up on this Zach Speed car once again pretty heavily. So that was a nice few couple of corners there. And also looking in the rearview mirror, you can see the red car behind has now dropped away a little bit. So now we are the ones that are attacking, not the ones that are defending. And it looks like uh, the blue car up ahead in six. Ooh, Zach Speed car with a big twitch of oversteer heading into that left high speed left hander there. That's going to put me right up onto the back of him as we're in second gear going through this uphill left hander. And then we're going to go up and over the crest of this hill and then downhill. And then I got on the brakes pretty early there because I wasn't so sure how early the AI was going to break for that. And I didn't want to run into the back of him. But that's given me a much better exit by having such a slow entrance to the corner. I got a great exit, but, you know, this is not a passing location in this type of car. So really nothing I could do. Third gear through that little sort of chicane area. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Late apex to get on the throttle. There we go. Now we're on the throttle. We've caught right up to the back of him, but again, we just run out of road and there's, I mean, it would be very, very dangerous to try and do an overtake there. Uh, again, taking a very late apex. Down into first gear, actually, for that corner. Now up into second. We're getting a great run on the Zach Speed car, but then we get a twitch of oversteer in second gear, and that is just going to kill all of our momentum, so no chance to overtake once again. Uh, dropping it down into second gear. Really aggressive over the curbing there on the inside. Uh, again, I'm not very used to driving a right-hand drive car. I, I definitely have a lot more experience in left-hand drive cars. So uh, I have a bit of a hard time judging when, when the curbing's on the left-hand side, when I'm on the right-hand side. It's, it's hard to explain. I'm, I'm sure you guys that are used to right-hand drive cars can kind of understand it. Um, but again, we are right up on the back of this Zach Speed car. Uh, really just hounding him. Did not take a great corner there. Big snap of oversteer. Are we going to keep it out of the barrier? Just about keep it out of the barrier. But that has killed, once again, all of our momentum. And we are losing time now to that white car up ahead. And remember, this is a battle for sixth position. I am currently in seventh. Uh, last place is the guy behind me, and he's actually catching up to me. So this is a pretty intense race. I'd say the AI was doing a great job. Uh, also, I think this was a good choice of car. It kind of threw me off, but at the same time, it was easy to drive but at the same time, not really easy to drive. It's easy to drive because it's so slow. You know, everything happens in slow motion. Even when you start sliding in this car, it feels like it's happening in slow motion when you compare it to the Ferrari concept car, uh, for example. Like that thing, when you get a twitch of oversteer, you better catch it immediately or you're going into the wall. Uh, whereas with this car, everything happens much, much slower. Uh, there's just more of it. So there's more oversteer, more understeer. It's just easier to deal with with this car compared to something that's a little bit more powerful. Uh, taking more of an inside line versus that Zach Speed car, getting a great exit out of there. I definitely got on the throttle a little bit sooner through that right-handed hairpin than he did, dropping it down into first gear this time for the carousel and, again, closing right up on the back of him. I'm heading to the outside. Am I going to be able to overtake him? He seems to have had a bad exit, a snap of uh, wheel spin. I don't, I'm not really sure, but... It's almost like he's letting me through right here, or at least he's letting me alongside. I'm going to have to go around the outside of this left-hander, and I've done so without too much issue. I run a little bit wide there, but that's actually AstroTurf, not grass. That's right off the circuit on the right-hand side after that corner. So you can use a little bit of that AstroTurf, but then you got to quickly get back onto the onto the asphalt if you can. Uh, down in second gear for this right-hander, and it looks like we are now actually pulling away from that white car behind us. And we've got that blue car now in sixth position up ahead of us, or I'm sorry, in fifth position. Uh, not much to this lap left, though. Uh, oh, right. Uh, so last lap was an 8 minute 45. 8 minute 45. Again, the Ferrari concept car did a 5 minute 33. Uh, that is 3 minutes and 12 seconds slower. 
3 minutes and 12 seconds. So the Ferrari can nearly do two laps of the Nordschleife in the time that it takes this car to do one lap. Yep, think about that for a minute. Uh, it's pretty intense. It's nearly twice as fast. Nearly, t I mean, when you think of something as being twice as fast, it, you know, it doesn't seem like a strong word, but it, literally, it's like twice as fast. <laughs> I mean that in the most literal sense of the word. Uh, we've had a great set of corners there. We've pulled away significantly from the cars behind him. We're catching right up to this blue car. Took that uh, double right-hander area very well. Car goes very light as you go over the top of that hill there, and then now we're going to drop down yet another hill. Full throttle through there, staying far to the left-hand side so you don't run out wide after that jump. Uh, nearly full throttle through that section, but not quite. So keeping it pressed, though. The throttle's all the way open, up into fifth gear briefly before tapping the brakes because I really wasn't sure where to brake for this corner. Uh, you know, when, you, when you're in a race and you're not sure where to brake, you just kind of use your opponents uh, and just judge by where they brake, and that's sort of what I'm doing here in this race. Uh, going to go down into second gear for the final time in the carousel now. Catching up to this blue car pretty heavily, actually. We are right over, all over the back of him. If we can get a good exit out of this kind of double, triple right-hander thing here, then we might have a shot. He's pulling away, though, and it's not been a great corner there. He's on the brakes. I just saw his brake lights come on, but still, I think he's going to carry more speed out of that corner coming onto this very long straight than I am. And again, I don't think the slipstream is very powerful in this car. So yeah, you can see he, we're, we're really, he's not pulling away. We're not catching up. Uh, we're just kind of stretching out because of the speed difference. But I would say uh, the gap between us is more or less the same as it was when we came onto the, onto the straight. So essentially, I have this very, very long straight now to think about something. And what I'm thinking about is, okay, I have one, two, three corners to try and overtake this guy and see if I can get fifth place. And I said, screw it, I'm going for it. I'm in sixth right now, why not? So I am going to go for a ballsy overtake here right at the end of the race to see if I can grab fifth position. You can see I'm breaking very late. I'm trying to get as close as I can. I'm just pushing my luck here and really getting nice and close in on this guy. And then can I get through this corner very nicely? I do. I'm all over the back of him. Just one corner remaining. I can't break late enough and unfortunately going to come home in sixth position. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Coming up next is the external camera replay. Thanks for watching again. Bye-bye.